Come join our family of six on our two-week, 1,870-mile road trip in our modified Lance 2185 travel trailer from Utah to Arizona and back to see the Parowan Petroglyphs, the Valley of Fire, Lake Mead and the Hoover Dam, Lake Havasu, Quartzsite, Friends in Phoenix, Canyoneering near Tortilla Flat, Goldfield Ghost Town and Mine, Sedona, Arizona, the Grand Canyon, Horseshoe Bend, and the Coral Pink Sand Dunes before driving through snow back home. This is our first big road trip after all our modifications to make our travel trailer fully electrically powered by 2,650 watts of solar panels on the roof and 9.6 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries, as well as Starlink for internet connectivity. Click on the card above to watch the overview video of all our modifications which enabled us to never use our generator or any propane throughout the entire trip. This was also the first trip with James who was born 9 weeks before we departed. Being in February, we used our heat pump mini split for both heating overnight in below freezing temperatures in Utah and a little bit of cooling in Quartzsite, Arizona. Throughout the trip we only boondocked on free public lands with one exception of mooch docking in a friend's driveway in Phoenix. Come join us while we explore beautiful new places and test the performance of our fully sun-powered travel trailer in the real world. It's now the next morning, today is Friday, and um, our battery got down to 51% after our morning cooking and things like that. Um, our fresh tank is down to a third, and uh, we decided just to go ahead and fill up since we can uh, here at the friend's house. So we are doing that right now, and then uh, we will be going to a dump station to dump the gray tank and the black tank, which this is not ac very accurate because obviously you can't have two-thirds and two-thirds when we only had uh, a whole tank to work with in the first place. But anyway, uh, we're going to take on new water and then go dump. Good morning, James. <laughs> Good morning, Dad. He's got some sun coming on him. We are currently camped out, like I said yesterday, in our neighbor's driveway. So that's what the view looks like outside. And... Uh, the girls are eating some breakfast Good here. We have some James. scrambled eggs with Good potatoes morning, and spinach Dad. and stuff. Good morning, Lydia. And then coming over here as a status update, you know, so we used the induction cooktop for breakfast and a little bit of the mini split for heating up the trailer this morning. We're only at 53 watts and um, it's 8 to 12 a.m. and the battery is at 62%. Uh, so the, the watts is quite a bit lower than it would be if we were just out in the open desert. Um, but in this case, we are actually quite shaded by a big old tree out the window here, and so our solar is suffering. But it's okay, we'll have still plenty of sun throughout the day to be able to get the solar and get the batteries back up to 100%. And looking at the temperatures, it is currently 70 inside and 66 outside. Well, we're filling up yet again. We're at a Costco, so it's 30 cents less than normal, so it's at $3.49 a gallon. And we stopped right at $100 because they're not letting us go, go past that. We went again and we got up $6 more, another two gallons. After gassing up the truck, we drove to our friend's house where Jessica and the kids played with their friends and I headed off with my old canyoneering friend and college roommate, Cliff. We drove for an hour and 15 minutes to Tortilla Flat up in the Superstition Mountains. Well, we just parked at Tortilla Flat, which you can see is a happening restaurant behind me. And we're doing a, a canyon now. We've left the highway behind us. You can see the road down there behind me. There is also an RV campground down there behind me as well. We are proceeding up to this mountainside. We're not on a trail. We're going to head to the beginning of the canyon now. We are at the top now of at least this little bench. There's a lot of cool cactuses around us. And there's Cliff up that way, just looking at the amazing view. There's the road we came up from. Right there is the Four Peaks Mountain in the Superstition Mountains range. Right, Cliff? That is correct. All right, let's keep hiking. We're uh, getting up to the top of this bench. This is the highest, this is the highest elevation. Okay, the highest elevation we're going to be hiking. And it's going to be a cool view, I think, over this. Yeah, this is looking cool. Here, it's like yeah, it's like greenish yellow hue. Look at this view.
All right, we've arrived at the canyon head. This is where we just came from, right there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a blue strap on the ground. That's the anchor for this rappel. And this is the first rappel. It's only like 20, 30 feet, but there's a pool of water there at the bottom. So we're gonna get our feet wet for sure, and then we'll continue on down the canyon. Okay, I'm coming down. Rappel number one down. We only got wet up to just over our knees. And then here's the next one. We've down climbed the canyon a ways and now we're down to the next required rappel. Cliff is squeezing through this little hole. <laughs> That's a fun start to a rappel. Yeah. Or I guess it's not even the rappel having started yet. It's nope. getting to the top of the rappel. You hand me my backpack and the rope. Sure thing. So that's the hole, and up over here is the actual canyon. It's a pretty good rappel. Like a hundred feet or so. Kind of hard to see with between the contrast of the bright and the dark. It's really cool to see these cacti on the edge of the canyon like this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here's Cliff going off this next rappel. Hey, Cliff. Hey. We are down here in this cave, kind of. It's a, a pool. And then above is this hole that we had to climb down through to get down underneath this giant rock. And then the uh, webbing is secured right here. Here's the uh, cl cliff we just rappelled down. And here's the cliff that's stacking the rope. <laughs> and here's the cliff stacking the rope. <laughs> this is where we're going next. It's not a really long canyon, so it's fun to be able to set up more. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, it looks like we're at the bottom of the canyon. That's only two hours. You started at 120. Huh, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, so. Oh, here's the road. so <laughs> cool. Listen to that exhaust. And here we are, yeah, there's the exit, there's Tortilla Flats. There's quite the party happening down here. Oh wow, old Model A maybe? Yeah. Well that was a lot of fun. We used yeah, to, like to canyon canyoneer way more often, and it's fun to be able to get out and do a canyon at least every once in a while, maybe once a year if that. It's a fun environment to get back into. After heading back to their house, we spent the evening visiting with our friends before driving back to our trailer for the night. The next day we went to visit another college roommate friend's family where they have an electric go-kart track in their backyard. <laughs> Are you ready for this lid? Yo, Lydia! Hey, Lydia, go faster! Got back to the trailer after being away for a while and it's now 93.4 degrees here inside and 80 almost 82 degrees outside so i've just turned on the mini split and we'll see how quickly it cools down the trailer also at this time the battery is at 66 percent and we're getting uh, nearly 1500 watts of solar all right it's feeling real cool in here and looking at this it's now 75.6 degrees inside still 81 outside and uh, looking over here at the battery we're at 67 percent so uh, we've been using pretty heavy power as we're bringing down the temperature in the RV, but uh, once it gets down to temperature, I'm sure it'll reduce its power consumption quite a bit. Uh, keep in mind the other AC loads that are going on is we have a crock pot here on low, 
and also the water heater is on and uh, that cycles on and off periodically. Here's a fun little pro tip. Because we have solar and batteries and inverters, we can just have electricity going down the road just fine. We have our dinner in this crock pot and it's cooking and we can see it's plugged into this outlet right there. And uh, so when we arrive at our destination, it'll be cooked and ready to eat. But in the meantime, we didn't want it to fall off the counter. So I took these ratchet straps that I had just in the truck, ran them around these pieces of wood and over the handle here and then a, one around the faucet there and around this handle. So it's it's holding the crock pot right here in place so it doesn't fall or go anywhere. The lid is strapped on with the, the built-in crock pot latch there. And when we get to our destination, dinner will be served. We've left our friend's house and now we're going up here into the Superstition Mountains to Lost Dutchman Park, or rather just north of it. And there's a, a BLM land parking spot that we're gonna go to and hope there's availability. The drive to this BLM camping location was only a 21 minute drive going about 14 miles away from where we had been camped out in our friend's driveway. We came here because when I drove past here the prior day canyoneering, I thought it looked like a cool spot surrounded by beautiful scenery and it's closer to the hike we wanted to do. What I didn't anticipate was how crowded it would be, especially for any ground that was slightly level. The ground is super uneven, so it's limiting the larger rigs to where they can get and level it. This is by far the most crowded place we've camped, but it worked out just fine, with only one generator going all night, which, unluckily for us, was our next door neighbor. We are at our new campsite, and it's much more crowded than usual. So we put our trailer there and our truck here, but we're about to go on a quick hike. Uh, but this is the view from this particular BLM land. And there are a lot more cactuses here. And uh, although there are power lines above us, it's not ideal. But hey, it's free. So let's go on the hike. Hey girls, are you excited for the hike? Yeah. Yeah? How excited are you, Lucy? So excited? All right, let's do it. All right, we've parked our truck and we're heading down this hike here. Yeah, you're right. Especially this desert, look at all of them. Upon getting back to our trailer, the girls explored our new campsite while we got dinner ready. Then we ate dinner with our friends, spending the evening visiting with them. This was our first time having anyone over for dinner to our trailer while camping, and it was a success, ice cream and all. We both come from tent camping, where food is packed in a cooler with ice and where ice cream is simply not an option. It is really luxurious to have a fully functioning apartment we can tow around with us with a fridge and freezer. As the sun set, our friends headed home and we headed to bed. This is the Victron monitoring portal that shows our RV's electrical system for the days that we were there. And this particular day showing on the screen right now is the day that I was canyoneering with Cliff. So that morning we had minimal electrical consumption throughout the night. The mini split was probably not really doing much, if, uh, if anything at all. And then you can see these little bit of spikes here. That's probably the water heater coming on periodically. It looks like about every three hours or so for a little bit. So the battery is running down. That's this blue line right here, slowly running down. We wake up in the morning. We use more energy as we're getting ready and making breakfast and whatnot. Kind of bottoms out here around 58%, uh, around 10 or 11 in the morning. And then that's uh, when we head over to our friend's house. So we're not there. And the solar ramps up, but remember it wasn't very good first thing in the morning because of that big tree right next to us. So normally solar would start to ramp up like over here at about 7 or 8 a.m. And you can see it's virtually non-existent until it starts to barely start around 9. And actually it starts to build here at about 11 a.m. So then it builds up and you can see the band here. It goes upwards as the battery fills up and it gets to 100% at about 4 p.m and then the solar production just dropped off because it has nowhere to go. And then later on, it uh, starts to 
we're using energy and so it starts to come down again. So for that day, we achieved uh, 6.3 kilowatt hours of energy production. It could have been more than that, of course, because the battery filled up, it couldn't be more. Um, but because of that shade, it definitely limited that as well. And we, we would have just gotten charged sooner in the day if we didn't have that shade. And then our consumption was 3.8 kilowatt hours throughout the day. We really weren't in the trailer very much in the latter part of the day, but we were there kind of late in the morning. Looking at the following day, this is when we were riding the electric go-karts around my other friend's backyard and when we went on that hike. Uh, throughout the night, the battery was running down a little bit and you can see we have a little bit more energy consumption going on that night. I don't really know why. Uh, also punctuated by the water heater coming on periodically. Then we make breakfast in the morning and you can see the state of charge of the battery running down and it bottoms out around 46%. And then around here, you can see the solar is starting to ramp up. And so at some point here as well is when we relocate the trailer over to the uh, BLM boondocking location up by the um, Lost Dutchman State Park. In any case, we don't do that until later in the afternoon and the solar production you know, was what it could be. And then it pretty much drops off as the, the sun is setting that day. We were hiking and, and whatnot during this time. So our battery actually never got up to 100% this day. And we uh, ended the day here at uh, 59%. We achieved 7.1 kilowatt hours of energy production this day and we consumed eight kilowatt hours. So we actually used more than we produced and I chalk up the lack of production just to being under that shade tree for a good portion of the morning. And when we reloc relocated, it, it wasn't enough sun left in the day to really get it charged all the way back up. In our next video, we explore the nearby Goldfield ghost town and mine tours, going on a tour of the mine and seeing all the sites of shops in their western town recreation. After a game of checkers, we watched the show they put on periodically throughout the day. Then we packed up our trailer and drove to an RV dump station to empty our tanks and fill our fresh water, as well as doing some grocery shopping. We then begin our prolonged drive home, driving 45 miles north of Phoenix to camp for the night.